Hello everyone, um, welcome to uh, this uh, video of our online series explaining the human anatomy and the human physiology online. And what I wanted to do here is to cover a, a challenging topic that we have, which is the electrical activity of the heart. Many of the students, undergraduate students, who are taking uh, human physiology have kind of a difficulty in, in understanding uh, this topic. So in order to facilitate our learning in the classroom, I decided to make this video. Uh, hopefully you will find it uh, beneficial to your reviewing of the topic. Now, in this video, we will learn together how the heart has an algorithm. Uh, the heart is capable of beating on its own. Um, it's not ordered by your cerebral cortex the way that your skeletal muscles are. Instead, it has its own brain, or what we call pacemaker cells. These are the cells that will enable the heart to beat on its own, even when it's denervated. That means when we cut all the nerve supply going to the heart, the heart is still capable of beating. Now, how is that possible? Now, how can we apply what we learned of uh, the electrophysiology and the membrane potential, the action potential, into understanding this very, very important function, which is the cardiac pacemaker activity? Then we will go from that into understanding that the pacemaker cells, these are the cells that dictate the rhythm of the heart, they're not really contracting cells. They're non-contractile fibers. And now the contractile fibers, on the other hand, they function completely different. They have uh, their different way of generating an action potential which is so unique and it's different than the action potential we learned in the neurophysiology or in the skeletal muscle physiology it has its own way and has a very broad absolute refractory period which you will uh, realize with me together. But with this kind of introduction let's see together what are we really talking about? So first of all, we need to understand that we have two kinds of cardiomyocytes. We have the contractile cells. These are 99% of the cardiac muscle cells. They do the mechanical work of pumping. On the other hand, we have the autorhythmic cells. These are the ones that don't contract. However, they have specialized electrophysiology that allows them to generate impulses at a certain rhythm. And these impulses are the ones that will travel across the cardiac muscles in order to initiate the heart rate. Now we will see that together. And first of all, we're gonna discuss uh, the, the autorhythmic cells and where are they? Uh, we'll realize that we have uh, one here, which is in the right atrium, very close to where the venous sinus is opening. That's why we call it uh, SA node, which is sinoatrial node. It's also very close to the superior vena cava, but the name is really arising from the opening of um, the coronary sinus which opens into the right atrium. So this is the SA node, and please realize that these um, areas that we see here, whether it's the SA node or the atrioventricular node or these bundles or these little branches, these are not nerves, these are muscle fibers, but they're non-contractile muscle fibers. They're capable of generating a rhythm, and we will see how, but they are not capable of producing tension, producing contraction. 
The other thing is that you will realize that these specialized fibers have in certain areas they will have so many gap junctions like here in the bundle branches and in the Purkinje fibers that will allow them to transmit the action potential wave so fast so rapidly that allows the heart to pump in synchrony and we call that functional syncytium if you remember we did mention that in the lecture so anyhow we have the SA node, which is the sinoatrial node, and that will generate to you the highest rhythm, the highest rhythm. And we'll explain this to you in a little bit. Now, these impulses that are generated in the SA node or sinoatrial node are going to depolarize the right atrium and will travel to the other side, as you can see here, to also depolarize the left atrium. This is the first site for the generation of your rhythm. Now, the rhythm cannot cross to the ventricles because we have fibrous tissue. The fibrous tissue, if you remember, we talked about excitable fibers. The excitable fibers are either muscles or nerves. But collagen fibers and fibroblasts are not really excitable fibers. So the only way for the depolarization wave to pass from the atria to the ventricles is through this little door or what we call AV node, atrioventricular node. And from the atrioventricular node, it's going to go into what we call the bundle of Hiss, and from the bundle of Hiss into the right and left bundle branches, and from there it's going to go into these tiny little branches or what we call Purkinje fibers. You will also realize that the speed of transmission of this depolarization wave, whereas it's very fast in the bundle of Hess, it's very fast in the bundle branches, it's extremely fast in the Purkinje fibers, it's very, very slow at the AV node. That means the depolarization wave that got generated here in the atria is going to get delayed at the AV node. It's almost as we discussed in the lecture, it's almost like um, the, the, the bouncer in front of a restaurant or a bar that will not allow people to get in unless the place is ready for it. So it's going to keep the signal here at this door without depolarizing the ventricles. And this is very, very important function, this split between the contraction or the depolarization which causes the contraction of the atria and the depolarization of the ventricle, we would like to have this what we call functional delay. And the functional delay will allow the atria first to contract and therefore ensure the emptying of the atria and the filling of the ventricles before the ventricles contract. You don't want the ventricles and the atria to contract at the same time because that will interfere with the filling of the ventricles during, during the diastole. You would like to have a prolonged diastole and that allows the complete filling of your ventricles. We're going to get back into this when we talk about um, the, the EKG and how important is this functional delay in creating to us what, what is known as PR interval. And the PR interval is, uh, is, is a gap in the electroactivity in the heart uh, which really indicates the, the gap between the depolarization of the atria and the depolarization of the ventricles and this gap is in is is mediated by the av node having this what we call functional delay sounds good so let's go back again to these areas we agreed that we have the sa node and the sa node fires a signal it goes to 
depolarizes um, the atria, it travels through the cardiac muscles here, and then it will take a highway track to depolarize also the AV node. Now the AV node is gonna delay the depolarization process, and then it passes it to the AV bundle, or the bundle of Hiss, and from there to the branches, and finally to the Purkinje fibers. Sounds good? All right. So, as I told you earlier, this SA node is the place where um, the, um, the, 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 the autorhythmicity is generated. Now, is it the only place that is capable of generating an autorhythm? No. All of these areas, what you see in front of you, are capable of generating an autorhythm. That means the AV node can generate the autorhythm, the bundle, uh, the AV bundle, and the bundle branches can also generate to you uh, an autorhythm. Even the Purkinje fibers can generate to you an autorhythm and take this any electrically unstable, any electrically unstable cell in the cardiac muscle can also generate to you an autorhythm and we will talk about that at some point okay well if they all can generate to you an autorhythm how come the sa node is the big boss well the sa node is the fastest one and when the sa node is present everyone listens no one generates the rhythm they just obey the rhythm that is created by the SA node. That means if you think of this as a hierarchy you have in, I don't know, a, a factory that's producing Apple watches, since it's now very fashionable. So the big boss here is gonna say, well, I need from this factory, I, will, I want 10,000 watches per day. All right, everyone will generate 10,000 watches per day because the big boss here is ordering the, has a high ceiling for the orders, okay? Well, let's say this guy now is sick one day and it's up to that guy, which is closer more to the workers and knows that it's 10,000 watches is too much to produce. So what should we do? Well, how about if you just give me 5,000 watches? And that means now the rhythm that is being made in the absence of the big boss is much lower, right? But as long as this SA node is present, everyone else will obey. So it looks more like this, that the SA node has a very high firing action, which is your normal pacemaker, and it can produce to you between 70 and 80 beats per minute in the heart. Now, in the absence of the SA node, the AV node is capable of producing to you about 40 to 60 beats per minute. And in the absence of that, the bundle of Hiss and the Purkinje fibers, they generate only to you 20 to 40, and of course this does not really sustain any activity and we all know or we at least have heard of something called pacemaker of the heart when someone gets an electrical device that will act as a pacemaker and therefore it will fire electrical signals to stimulate the heart at a given rhythm so it re-establishes the rhythm for people who have this uh, normal rhythm messed up for one reason or another. And we will cover that when we get into the arrhythmia and uh, abnormal rhythms in the heart. Sounds good? So once again, even though we have different pacemakers, not all of them dictate the, the speed of the heart rhythm or the, the, the heart rate at the same time. It's the, the loudest and the strongest is the one that controls the rhythm. That means if the SA node is the one that is present, uh, then everyone else will listen. In the absence of the SA node, then the AV node will dictate the rhythm and everyone else will listen. 
you get the point. So in your book, it's illustrated as if it's um, it's a local, it's different locomotives pulling um, pulling um, the train cars. And if in the absence of the fastest locomotive, the next locomotive will pick up the speed. Or this is this is actually a semi truck. It's not a, a locomotive. Um, it's going to pick up the speed and pull everything with that given second given speed in the absence of which then you have a much lower speed than normal and as i told you and we're going to talk about that later on when we get into the arrhythmia and the unusual rhythm uh, cardiac rhythms um, the cardiomyocytes here, if they reach instability, electrical instability, whether that is because of ischemia or injury, and they start firing on their own, that generates to you what is known as ectopic uh, focus or ectopic um, node. Uh, and it will give you an ectopic rhythm or extrasystole and um, that of course can increase the heart rate significantly and we will get into that when we uh, when we discuss uh, the problems with the heart rhythm sounds good so once again we have the SA node we have the AV node we have the AV bundle the bundle branches the Purkinje fibers please remember that not all of them generate the the impulses at the same speed and please also remember that these fibers are muscle fibers. They're just the kind of muscle fibers that do not contract. They are the kind of fibers that generate the pulses or transmit the pulses, but they do not contract on their own. Sounds good? All right. So what makes them fire these impulses on their own now? This is probably the most challenging picture uh, or graph that we are going to describe today just because many of you don't like this um, electrophysiology, the sodium, the potassium, the calcium. Well, let's go back to the regular action potential that we learned in the skeletal muscles and in the, um, in the uh, neurons. We had if you go back we had uh, resting membrane potential and the resting membrane potential varied sometimes it was minus 90 like it was in the muscles sometimes it was minus 70 okay and because of some event and that's a very important distinguishing point here because we had something stimulating the nerve or we had something stimulating the skeletal muscles right and at that point, the voltage-gated sodium channels, if you remember, opened up. And that caused, whether it's a muscle or a nerve, to undergo what was known as depolarization. The polarity uh, was reduced or flipped to positive, right? Positive charge. And that was because of the influx, the rapid influx of sodium, right? And then as we reach the peak, if you also remember, we close the sodium channels and we open the potassium channels and that will allow the potassium to exit, right? That was the depolarization and the repolarization events. But remember, we had to fire it, right? We had to initiate it. Well, over here we have an algorithm. It initiates itself. So let's see how is that even possible. If we go here, this is, we don't call it the resting membrane potential. Why is that? Because these cells are never rested. They keep firing on their own. So we can't really call them resting membrane potential. But this is the beginning point, right, of the membrane potential. Once it reaches, you now keep a very open mind here, once it reaches that level at minus 60, no more potassium leaks. That means the leaky channel or the voltage gated channels for potassium will shut down. Okay. And therefore it doesn't go below minus 60. 
it stops at minus 60 if you remember it's the leakage of the potassium outside the cell that causes the repolarization and the drop of the membrane potential into minus 70 and in some cases minus 90. But in this case, these voltage gated channels for the potassium do not wait till you are minus 70 or minus 90 to close. They close at minus 60. Good? At least they start closing at that point. We're good? Now, at the same time, when these close, other channels, which we have never heard before, it's called funny channels, F channels. Now, these channels for sodium will open on their own. Once you reach minus 60 millivolts, then the, the funny channels for the sodium will open up. Well, let's review. Opening the sodium channel will allow sodium to come from the extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid and sodium having positive charge so that will cause partial depolarization as we can see here. We're good? Again? At this point, when we reach minus 60, two events take place. Number one, the permeability of the potassium is reduced. Why is that? Because the voltage gated channels for potassium will close. At the same time, the funny channels for the sodium will open up and therefore allowing gradual increase in the sodium levels, gradual increase in the sodium levels in the heart and in, the, in, in these pacemaker cells to about maybe minus 50 or so. We're good? This is the first event that we need to recognize. The second event happens here around minus 50 or so. In this event, minus 50, minus 45, at this level, then the funny channels will close. But at the same time, the transient channels for calcium will open up. So the permeability for calcium will increase. And remember that calcium has two positive charges. So again, we will continue the depolarization, but the depolarization this time is not induced by the sodium, but it's induced or continued by the calcium. So I started with sodium, and then sodium shut down, and immediately calcium picks up, and that will continue the ascending level of your depolarization line, okay? So now I reach to about minus 40. So let's review once again the events. Again, the starting point is here, minus 60. At that point, the voltage-gated potassium channels will shut down, causing potassium to stop leaking outside. At the same time, the funny channels for sodium will open up, allowing sodium to come in, but not sudden, gradually. As it goes in, there is partial depolarization here of the cell membrane. That will shut down once you reach the 45 or 50 level, you will shut down your voltage, your, your funny channels for the sodium. At the same time, you will open the transient channels for your calcium. We're good? Now, this will continue till about minus 40, and that is your threshold. If you get that, then you reach the threshold, which will not fire the sodium channels, not like the threshold we are used to in the skeletal muscles and in the neurons, but you're going to fire calcium channels, which are called long-term calcium channels. So it's really the calcium that is more important here for the depolarization, for the full depolarization events that happen in the pacemaker cells, not the sodium. Sodium initiates it, and it's only the funny channels that spontaneously take it halfway to depolarization. But the other half is mediated by the transient calcium channels. That will get it to your threshold, and at that point, 
you open the long term calcium channel and those will take it to full depolarization and at that point of course you don't need the transient anymore so the transient shuts down and it's the long-term calcium channels that pick up so let's review what you what you see again so first event that happens here potassium stops leaking why because the voltage gated potassium channels close now sodium will start leaking in gradually from what we call funny channels that causes spontaneous partial depolarization of the membrane at this level the sodium channels the funny channels will start closing up and at the same time the transient calcium channels will open allowing the depolarization to reach the threshold you reach the threshold you shut down the transient calcium channels and you open the long-term calcium channels that completes the depolarization for you good now we reach about zero or five millivolts now we are in the positive territory at that point the voltage gated potassium channels will open and you don't need the calcium channels anymore the long-term calcium channels so i close the so i close the calcium and at the same time i open the potassium so that means calcium is not coming in but potassium is going out right remember potassium is much higher inside the cell than outside and that will leak the potassium outside the cell causing the repolarization so this is your repolarization and it's your regular way which is a voltage gated potassium channel that will cause the repolarization of your membrane we're good at this point everything will start all over again if you remember this guy that opened that caused the repolarization event to take place will shut down at the same time as it shuts down your funny channels will open up when your funny channels open up that will cause slow depolarization spontaneous slow depolarization at this point these guys will shut shut down and the transient calcium will open that will continue the slow depolarization you reach the threshold then fast calcium comes in through the long-term calcium channels and once you reach the peak potassium will leak out after you close the calcium channels and therefore you reach the repolarization and it continues going up down up down and that generates to you the auto rhythm auto rhythm and as you can see from this graph you can manipulate and regulate this auto rhythm for example if i would allow the sodium channels to open faster or if i allow the transient calcium channels to open faster and therefore i am allowing the rhythm to happen much faster pace on the other hand if i play around with the potassium the leaky channel or the voltage gated channels for the potassium then as the sodium is coming in the potassium continues to go out and that will delay this ascending part of the curve and therefore this ascending depolarization is going to happen slightly later and that alone is capable of slowing down your heart rate right so we will learn together that you can manipulate the heart rate by manipulating the funny channels by manipulating the potassium channels or by manipulating the transient calcium channels sounds good all right so this was the electrophysiology of your pacemaker cells again remember these pacemaker cells are really capable of firing on their own and the reason for that is that they have this guy the funny channels for sodium which opens as soon as you reach a certain 
membrane potential on their own. Sounds good? All right. So as we move on from here, as we move from the pacemaker cells, then this depolarization wave is going to go across the cardiac, uh, the cardiomyocytes into through the atria, therefore depolarizing the atria. Once you depolarize the atria, of course, you will induce contraction in the atria, and we will see how the contractile action potential looks like, which you will realize it's significantly different from everything we have learned together here with um, the pacemaker potential. What you're looking at here is the pacemaker potential, not your good old regularly regular 99% cardiomyocytes. Sounds good? All right. So if we look at the regular cardiomyocyte, you will realize, wait a second, this doesn't resemble anything I have seen before, right? Well, maybe this part is the only part that has some resemblance, which is the fact that is um, the resting membrane potential is about minus 90, which we have seen before in the skeletal muscles. Okay. So what happens here is an action potential wave will reach, right? And therefore will excite this cardiac cardiomyocyte, right? And that will open up your voltage-gated sodium channels, right? So you have the voltage-gated sodium channels opening up really fast, and that will cause sudden depolarization, which is the ascending limb here of your curve, right? So over here, it's really the sodium, just like your nerves, just like the cardiomyocytes, uh, the, I'm sorry, the skeletal muscle fibers, where sodium was the reason for the depolarization that they took place, okay? And that was different, of course, from what we observed here, where the depolarization or the sudden ascent here in the curve was really mediated by the calcium and not the sodium, okay? So that's a distinguishing difference that we need to keep in mind. Okay, sodium came in, caused depolarization, and it's supposed to, to, as we learned before, that at this point, the, the sodium, the voltage-gated sodium channels will close, and the potassium channels will open, the voltage-gated potassium channels will open, and that will cause sudden repolarization. But wait a second, this did not happen. It's very different here. So yes, the potassium will open, but these guys are called transient potassium channels. They open, but they don't really remain open. They close down fairly fast, okay? These are the potassium channels or the transient potassium channels. We're good? Now, at the same time, your long-term calcium channels will open and those calcium channels will rush in with a positive charge enough to neutralize the loss of the potassium that you see. And therefore, you stay for a while, you're not going up in the voltage, you're not going down in the voltage, but you have what we call the plateau phase. And the plateau phase is mediated by the fact that the transient potassium channels slowly close and at the same time the long-term calcium channels open and therefore they neutralize each other and you reach this kind of plateau where the cell continues to be still depolarized. Then slowly afterwards then your calcium channels will shut down and therefore calcium now it's not coming in and simultaneously you will have the potassium channels the voltage gated potassium channels wide open both the transient and the long term you open up everything right 
and now your ordinary gated channels which are really the the, the long-term potassium channels not I'm sorry I said earlier the short term but the long-term potassium channels or the ordinary potassium channels will open up causing potassium to go out rapidly and in the absence of an influx of, of calcium coming in that will cause the complete repolarization of the membrane okay so where is the difference then well the difference between the good old regular action potential and the action potential of a cardiomyocyte a contractile not a pacemaker a contractile cardiomyocyte is the fact that yes sodium comes in but as potassium goes out it's only through the transient potassium channels and that will be opposed by influx of calcium from the long-term calcium channels and that will result in what we call the plateau phase then later on this calcium the long-term calcium channels will close and the ordinary uh, potassium channels will open up causing potassium to leak out fast and then you are reaching your membrane potential back again uh, and the, the interesting thing is at this point once you pass the minus 70 then your regular voltage gated channels will close but at the same time your leaky potassium channels will open and that allows the membrane potential to continue to go down from minus 70 to minus 90 and we really would like it to be at minus 90 all the time that will prevent the misfiring of the, the cardiac muscles any time when the resting membrane potential moves closer to the threshold then this particular cell which can happen in ischemia for example can fire on its own or in thyrotoxicosis or uh, caffeine overdose all of that can result in misfiring that you have ectopic rhythm from cells that should not be generating an auto rhythm but now they do generate an auto rhythm because they came closer to the threshold okay so let's review this graph again once again here is the resting membrane potential it's at minus 90 we want it to be minus 90 because it's so far from the threshold potential and that will prevent the misfiring when the depolarization wave reaches that particular cardiomyocyte it will fire in the sodium through the voltage gated sodium channels that will cause fast very rapid depolarization once it reaches a plus 30 or so your sodium channels will close your potassium channels which ones the transient ones will open allowing repolarization but quickly this will close and at the same time calcium comes in and they will oppose each other leading to what we call the plateau phase and finally the calcium channels will close and the potassium channels your regular potassium channels will open that will cause the rapid repolarization all the way towards the end the ordinary potassium channels will close and the leaky channels will open and that will make sure that your membrane potential reaches minus 90 okay what do we see here we realize that the length of the action potential is really long and that was mediated by the fact that we have calcium now we will realize that calcium has really two sources one of them is coming from the extracellular fluid but the biggest part is coming from the sarcoplasmic reticulum which is about 90 percent of the calcium is coming really from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and we're going to study together that calcium induces calcium calcium influx induces calcium release so that means calcium from the extracellular fluid will cause calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum 
we will learn that together later on in other lectures okay so we have tons of calcium and that opposes the potassium also the fact that your good old regular potassium channels the voltage gated potassium channels do not really open fast instead you have transient potassium which transient potassium channels which cause this rapid decline but that doesn't last you for too long right and that caused a plateau. That means the action potential is lasting approximately 250 milliseconds, which is quite significantly different from the 10 milliseconds we saw in the nerves, the 50 milliseconds we saw in some muscle fibers, even the slow muscle fibers, we had them at 100 milliseconds or so, but we never had 250 milliseconds. So why is that significant? If you remember, we agreed that as long as the cell is in a state of depolarization, you cannot stimulate it any further. That means as long as the cell is depolarized or the cardiac muscle is depolarized, you cannot give it another action potential. And if you remember, we agreed that this is called the absolute refractory period. So the absolute refractory period here is significantly longer, significantly longer than what you saw before in the neurons or in the skeletal muscles. And the reason for that is the electrophysiology is completely different. We see transient channels and at the same time we see a rapid influx, big influx of calcium coming from particularly the sar sarcoplasmic reticulum and that will neutralize the loss of the positive ions and therefore you have this plateau phase right so similar to what we had before you can also manipulate the length of the um, of the action potential by for example manipulating how long does calcium stay right if I pump the calcium back quickly to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, then I'm significantly shortening the, uh, the depolarization phase or the, the plateau phase, right? And you will see that this is actually one way of treating heart conditions and improving the, the pumping action of the heart is by reducing the plateau phase, right? Making the heart staying less time in what we call systole and we're going to study that together which is the state of the contraction of the ventricles sounds good so these are the electrical events that i wanted to discuss with you here in this video we learned two different kind of electrical events or two different kinds of action potential that happens one of them we call the uh, the pacemaker potential which has a, a firing a spontaneous firing and the spontaneous firing was due to the presence of these funny channels and the funny channels will cause the transient calcium to fire and the transient calcium will cause the long-term calcium to fire and now you reach the peak right and this happened in auto rhythmicity now, this does not happen in 99% of your cardiomyocytes. This only happens in the pacemaker cells, which are your SA node, your AV node, your bundle of His, your bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. These are the ones that are capable of pacemaker potential. Everything else has completely different pattern, which is characterized by the presence of what we call the plateau phase of an action potential and that was mediated by the fact that the transient calcium transient calcium channels do not stay open for too long and at the same time we have a release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum those two together will cause your action potential to remain or your membrane potential to remain positive and in a state of depolarization and then finally when the plateau is over then you close down the calcium channels the long-term calcium channels and you open the ordinary potassium channels and now potassium goes out fast 
causing the complete repolarization of the cardiac muscle. Sounds good? So this was my review to you uh, for the electrical events that take place in the heart. And uh, I hope you will find this video uh, valuable for reviewing this chapter. I'll try to make some more um, uh, videos for this chapter, uh, probably the cardiac cycles. And um, till then, have a great day.